A week-long exploration of the shores of Lake Superior on the Upper Great Lakes began at the edge of the country's Iron Range, Duluth, Minnesota, the beating heart of American industrialism. I wanted to gain a better understanding and a deeper appreciation for the contributions this area of the country has made to the industrial economy over the last century and a half, and to chronicle that experience. Another reason for this photo journey was to force myself to step out of my comfort zone and experiment with the genres of photography that I previously only dabbled in, or have avoided entirely architecture, abstracts, minimalism, and to share those attempts, my successes, and my failures with you. More on that later. My first stop was to get an overview, literally, in the moonlight, from the summit of the rocky bluff above the town, Enger Tower, high atop Grand Mountain, 530 feet above Lake Superior. The octagon-shaped monument was completed in 1939 and is constructed entirely of local bluestone. The monolith and the surrounding gardens were a gift to the city by Hagbert Enger, a self-made 19th century Norwegian immigrant who went from penniless laborer to the merchant prince of Duluth and became a generous philanthropist. Oh, and one more thing. I received several requests from viewers if I could provide more details about composition and gear and settings that I'm using for my photographs. So going forward here, I'll try to make a conscious effort to provide that. Great views from up here, but man, is it chilly. The wind coming in off of Lake Superior there. It's uh, probably in the low to mid 50s and with about an 18 mile an hour wind. So if there's any wind noise on the microphone, I apologize for that. But standing up here at the top of the tower, 80 feet above the, the surrounding landscape here, uh, I feel like I'm in like a 1980s disco or something with these lights. I hope you don't like start having seizures, but there's no avoiding that. They flash all night. And I was thinking that maybe it's going to interfere with the photos that I take, but maybe not. So I came up here specifically for a moonrise. And the moon was going to rise right out here, over the water here, and be able to get the ore docks in Superior, uh, or in Duluth over here, and the aerial bridge, which is that way. I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, but between clouds and all the haze from the Canadian wildfires. Uh, pretty hazy and uh, no moon. So, you know, you work with the conditions that you're presented with. So I just thought I'd come up here, take a few photos. Um, this first one here actually is of uh, the ore loading docks at, uh, at Duluth. So just to smooth out the water, I, uh, I'm shooting at 10 second shutter speed. F8, ISO 200, keep my ISO nice and low. Increase my shutter speed since I'm on a tripod. It's not much of a problem. The wind, yeah, it's making things a little bit blurry. I gotta kinda catch a little bit of a lull in the wind, but uh, yeah. Just wait for the wind to die down and then we'll take our shot. Two fifteen in the morning, and I had some visitors up here. Four high school fellas doing whatever high school fellas do in a park at two o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday. I know what I did when I was in high school. Two o'clock in the morning in a park. All right, here we go. Ten seconds. Had the two second timer on. And uh, well, that's pretty clear. 
very clear actually. I'm shooting with a 70 to 200, 70 to 200 millimeter lens at 200 millimeters. So, all right. What a spectacular view. Even without the benefit of the moon glow to provide reflection on the water and definition to the background, the lights of the city illuminate the busy ore docks and the mountains of taconite ore that await the Great Lakes freighters. The highway cutting through diagonally delineates industrial waterfront on one side from the commercial businesses on the other, which eventually give way to the sleepy residential neighborhoods in the lower right-hand corner. here now and take a photo of the lift bridge and then the largest freighter on the Great Lakes, the Paul Tregurtha, is scheduled to come in at 4.30 this morning. So we're going to head down there to the lift bridge and uh, try to set up a shot. So that's next. All right, let's move this over. It's really nice having this leveling base on this ball head here, this Acrotec ball head. Leveling base makes leveling your photos so much easier. Again, I'm shooting 10 seconds, F8, ISO 200. Got to wait for the wind to die down. I zoomed way in here to manually focus. Wait for the wind. It's cold. <laughs> Definitely cold. Two second timer. Shooting at 200 millimeter. check our focus here. Nice and crisp. And the 10 second exposure kind of, because it's so windy, the water's real choppy. This nice, smooths out the water very nice. Got some nice color and stuff on the water. This Canon L-Series lens, the EF 70 to 200 millimeter F4, is, in my opinion, the best all around lens that Canon make. It is incredibly versatile. It's tack sharp throughout its range, front to back, and clear to the edges. This bridge is over a mile and a half away, and you can see the crossbeam detail atop the decorative finials of the bridge's stanchions. The lens is lightweight and has a quick and perfectly silent ultrasonic motor for autofocus. And compared to many other Canon lenses, it's inexpensive and a great value for the money. I always keep this lens in my bag. All right, let's pack it up and head down to the lift bridge. So I made it back just in time <laughs> for the Paul R. Tregurtha to come through here into Duluth. 
through the aerial lift bridge, which you just saw going up. I'm right outside our hotel here, <coughs> South Pier Inn. Stayed here on purpose, because I knew the boats would be coming through, and uh, you know, it was two minutes from my room out here to the pier. So the shot that I have set up is one that I haven't seen too often. I'm not being familiar with this, the layout here, I don't know how much of the largest boat on the Great Lakes I'm gonna be able to get into this shot. Um, but I'll show you here in a second my shot that I have set up. Uh, shooting uh, 16 to 35 millimeter lens at 16 ml. Uh, half second, I might have to speed that up a little bit. Uh, ISO, uh, let me check, ISO 800. ISO 800 shooting at uh, at f8 so yeah she'll be here in a few minutes so only get one shot at this and I she's actually early she wasn't supposed to be in until um, 4 30 so she's about an hour early I was hoping maybe we'd have a little bit of um, twilight nautical twilight kind of lighten her up a little bit or if that moon comes out it's kind of hidden behind clouds right now uh, that would help but like I say you shoot to the conditions you have you can see I have my camera set up as high as it'll go on this tripod because I want to try to avoid getting this wall in the lower part of the foreground for my composition I have the entire bridge in uh, a little bit off to the right, but uh, I'm only, like I said, I'm only going to be able to get a few shots off when she comes through, so hopefully she'll have her headlight on. That'll be cool. And here is where I made a critical photographic error. I panicked. I couldn't believe the speed that Goethe was entering the harbor. Normally when I shoot at the Sturgeon Bay Ship Canal, the boats enter at around two knots. The Goethe was gliding along at five knots. So my half second shutter speed was too slow, blurring the passing vessel. To compensate, I doubled my shutter speed on the fly to one quarter of a second. But I didn't realize until I got home and edited these photos that I failed to adjust my aperture or my ISO and every resulting image was too dark and beyond saving. In addition, I was too close to the subject for the angle that I chose to shoot. Looking back on this now, I should have and could have approached the shot differently, but why didn't I use shutter priority mode instead of full manual mode and let the camera decide the correct aperture and ISO? It's unlike me to make such an egregious mistake, but I think that the 375 mile drive earlier that day and no sleep in the past 24 hours may have played a factor. A couple of so what shots of the aerial bridge is poor consolation for what I could have captured, but missed. Lesson learned. Well, good morning again, everyone. <laughs> it is about quarter to six in the morning. And this is the third time that I've been out since 10.30 last night. And <laughs> I think last, the last time I filmed any of this is we were up at the tower still and uh, just finishing up. That was around 2.30 this morning, 2.45 this morning. And uh, Came back to our hotel room here, and no, I saw you since then. <laughs> the last time I saw you was when the Paul Tregertha came in at around 3.30 this morning, just outside our hotel. So I uh, went up back to our room, and I uh, took about an hour nap, and then I wanted to make sure I 
caught sunrise, if there was going to be a sunrise, wasn't really sure because it had been cloudy all night. Looked out our window, sky was beautiful, beautiful yellow, just a nice buttercream yellow. And uh, yeah, so I got my gear together and came across the bridge, the lift bridge. Uh, took some shots of the lighthouse just as the sun was coming up and through the smoke from the wildfires in Canada. So it was kind of eerie. But the point I'm trying to make is there was no time to uh, make video because the sun was coming up so fast. And so I shot over there. Then I saw a shot I wanted to take last night on Lake Street shooting back toward the lift bridge. And uh, knowing that there probably wouldn't be any traffic or, or not much traffic at 5.30 in the morning, quarter to six in the morning, about 5.30, I guess. So it was nice, it was nice and barren. I got some beautiful light on that bridge and uh, also took some additional photos of some of the architecture, just kind of abstract architectural shots, I guess, cityscape shots. And then finally I came back to the shore in the parking lot of some hotel here now and uh, took a couple more shots just as the sun was going behind the bank of clouds it's going to be it for for this morning now but i got another nice shot of the lighthouse and at anchor over by superior wisconsin is the stewart court in the background colleen and i now today are um, heading north along the north shore of lake superior and I think our next stop is the Split Rock Lighthouse, which is a lighthouse I have been wanting to shoot for many, many years and have never had an opportunity. I planned a couple of trips to go up there, but something's always come up there where I had to cancel the trip. So it's up to Split Rock today. Then we're staying at a lodge a little bit north of there for a couple of days. So we'll just see what the rest of this day brings. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. journey to the shores of Lake Superior soon. 
In the meantime, thanks for watching. Please give it a thumbs up if you like the content and would like to see more videos like this. And subscribe to the channel if you would. Take care of yourselves now, and I'll see you down the road.